review. Nope. This is not that, this is something else. <laughs> How exactly does that work? In the past, you've seen me. You've seen me make a couple of videos where I multi-track vocals. No, God! Oh, spice hunter blocker body watch has 16 hours of BO blocking power! Forget the piano, screw the piano, just do the vocals. And it winds up being this uh, really elaborate giant chorus sounding thing with just a bunch of me's on the screen and not much else. And it seems like every time I post one of those videos, people ask me, hey, how do you do this? I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but I thought it might be fun to do one of these together and so you can see exactly how I do it when I'm not even uh, using the piano at all and I'm just, um, I don't know, finding something that I feel needs a full chorus behind it. And in this case, we have something a lot of fun to mess around with today. Ah! Ah! Yes, that's right, we're going to be harmonizing the lovely sound of goats screaming. <sighs> I'm okay, I swear. And let's just say that the more you listen to these things, the more they're ingrained into your mind to the extent that you can replicate them. <laughs> okay, I'm not- <laughs> the, the video's not gonna be uh, harmonized versions of the goat screaming. Anyways, let's, uh, let's go to the computer and do this. So, here's the thing. Again, many of you probably might know this from other multi-tracking videos as well, but really the best way to record this is sitting in front of the computer with my microphone going directly into Adobe Audition so that I can just layer something in and then boom, switch and track it again. And what that means is that the video that you're actually seeing, that's not the recorded version. Insert fraud comments here. It's fake. He's so fake. It's everything's auto-tuned. It's not fake. It's not auto-tuned. It's just like the video happens to be the most interesting when you film it like this and cut out this little frame here so that you can see my face and I can layer a bunch of them. I usually do six because I, I don't know. I don't know why I do six. I just, I just do. It just makes the video look more interesting. And when I'm recording those takes, I am singing it over and over and over and over again. It's just not the particular version that gets recorded into Audition that I can mess with and, and tweak everything. So let's head over to the computer and I'll show you how this whole thing works. Here we are in Audition. I have, uh, you can see a bunch of tracks set up here. There's 25 tracks. They all have an effects rack loaded into them. Now, here's a pro tip about recording any sort of like multi-track vocals. If you take each part and you record it like three times, just the same thing, like right over top of each other, um, it'll really help to balance out if there's any small inconsistencies in the performance or if there's any just like, you know, eh, whatever, we make mistakes, it happens. Sometimes we don't really want to have to take the time to get it to be completely perfect. So if you don't want to have to do that, then just layer it a few times because what it'll do is it'll start to balance out all those small inconsistencies and it'll give it sort of like a more of a choral kind of sound which I find to be really cool and I like the volume I like the the width of that sound I like sort of layering even if it's the same part so that's a trick that I use that I think helps the uh, the acapella videos come out better is that I take one individual part and I'll do it like a minimum of three times and I'll do that with every single part. So even if I only have maybe six or seven parts, I might have 28 tracks. Okay, so here is our goat. You saw the video, but here we can just kind of see. Very moving performance. So we're gonna do our best to uh, amplify that. So basically, I just take one of these at a time and I'm just gonna build it as a stack. Now there's two different ways to approach harmony. You can either approach it vertically or linearly. Vertically can be cool because then you can literally build out every note that you want in a chord. You can include any color tones that you want. You can uh, really mess around with clusters and kind of playing with the harmony until you get exactly what you want. On the other hand, linear is a good way to write if you want every single part to be interesting in and of itself. So for example, one of my professors in school used to tell me that Thad Jones, the Thad Jones Mel Lewis Orchestra, which then became the Village Vanguard Orchestra, which is still a band today. I think it's like one of the best big bands in, in, in the world, really. Thad Jones, who would write, you know, he would arrange a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the charts. He would write each part out 
So he'd like, instead of, you know, looking at a, I don't know if anybody's ever written for full band or big band or orchestra, but you see the score, it's got like a bazillion parts on it, however many parts are in the band. And, you know, you kind of go along and you write what you want. And sometimes we write vertically where we want to make sure that the notes in a chord that we want are all there in a stack. Uh, whereas Thad would write trumpet one all the way through, trumpet two, write it all the way through, beginning to end. That way, you got these parts that were all interesting. There was no altos, you know, the 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 poor altos that wind up going da 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 da, da the entire tune. Everything in a Thad Jones chart would have been uh, uh, dynamic, and it would have been uh, it would have moved around, would have had a melody. You almost could have like played it on its own, and it would have sounded like something. Depending on your goal. Sometimes linear writing is better for getting interesting harmonies because you're not always thinking about, well, what does this stack sound like on its own? And for that reason, there are some really, really interesting chord voicings in some of the Thad Jones Mellowis Orchestra music. So I tell you all that to tell you that we're not going to do that. We're going to do it vertically because my goal is not to write the most interesting harmony. My goal is for each chord to sound interesting. So I'm going to use the vertical approach. So you'll see exactly what that looks like now. So, <laughs> what I think is going on here is I think there's, um, <laughs> I think that um, at the very end, he's kind of like going up a half step. So, like, you know, or at least that's going to work. I could hold the note, but, he, but you can hear it, like he, the goat's fluctuating in there. Yeah, somebody ought to tell him he's a little pitchy. I'm just going to record a couple of uh, duplicates of that of the goat initially here. A couple layers. Down an octave. Cool. So you can see how fast we use up tracks here as we're just starting to stack things. All right, so now we have that. Um, I'm gonna leave that there for now and I'm, I'm just gonna start stacking harmony. So literally, I know the general chord that I wanna, you know, I'm gonna lay down the bass first. Dum, boom. A lot of people always ask me like, okay, how do you not laugh at these videos? It's like, all right, the goat was funny the first few times, but I mean, if you start doing this and you're just doing over and over and over and over, layer and layer and layer and layer, you stop hearing it like a joke. You stop hearing it even as a video. You just hear it as this sound that you're building. Let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. You gotta do that again. Let's see where we are. <laughs> this is so stupid. Okay, let's keep going. Let's uh let's throw another another layer up there. Let's see. Sure, let's do that. <laughs> Okay, I said I said you don't laugh when you're making these. Sometimes I do. So you can see we haven't done many parts. We've done maybe three or four parts and we've already used 13 tracks. So that's why we use a lot of tracks. Let's keep throwing parts on there. I don't know until I like it. So we're going to move on from there. So that's our first yeah. <laughs> ah. Now we kind of we kind of stay on that on the 7th if we've established that that result the, the resolved chord at the the first one before I don't even know what chord it is I guess it uh, we try to think 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 this is see I don't have perfect pitch a lot of people think I do I don't but I have certain ones that I can sort of remember that and there's a bunch of people yelling at the screen right now going it's an A or something I don't know um, but let's think about it um, bum. so let me think to something that I know I think it's a I think it's either an E or it's an E that's like a little bit sharp. Let's find out. Is it exactly an E? Ah! Might be a little flat, actually. It's almost exactly an E. Next one. Ah! I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna try, but it's a little bit of a mess. Ah! Ooh. Ooh, it might work. <laughs> it might work. Uh, all right. Ah! Oh, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah! Okay. Okay. So now we've got uh, two of these done, and um, usually it takes me quite a while, so I probably won't show the entire thing.
That's Joey, by the way. Follow Joey on Instagram for really no reason other than to see more pictures of Joey. <laughs> Link in the description down below. <laughs> so then literally the next part would be I'd stand here just like this, like an idiot in front of the camera and play that over and over on the computer and sing along with it. So I get uh, six or however many takes of a shot that I want. Now, like I said before, that's not the actual audio that I use because the audio that I use is what I sat there right there and recorded and you watch me do it. Uh, the reason I do this is because this is how I kind of convey, I don't want to call it acting, but I guess like the facial expression side of things because to me that's a part of how I can sort of, I don't know, invoke humor or just sort of convey something that's mildly entertaining at best. Um, but yeah, so that's the reason that I do the shot like this, even though it's not the same audio, uh, I use this so that I can sort of act out whatever I want to act out. Anyways, that's the, that's gonna be the end of this one for me. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Like this video, leave a comment, hit the bell notification so that YouTube tells you when I upload, because I have a tendency to not do that.